Hello my fellow med students, nursing students, PA students, and NSAID enjoyers worldwide. The good news about today's video is that the headache can give you teaches you exactly what drugs you could take to relieve the problem. Let's get started with game night at NSAID. This is coming at you from Dr. Images MD. Once again, I'm Sebastian. Now NSAID is throwing a game night, and rumor has it these things get crazy, but don't take my word for it. Let's take a look. Now the game night starts out with poker. On the table, the river's been dealt. That's three cards flipped for any of my laymans out there. They're the three main things NSAIDs treat. Their colors will be used throughout the picture. If one drug is particularly good at one, it will show that color of clothing as well as that card in their hand. If it's particularly bad at that one, it will show that card destroyed or something destroyed in that color at its feet. Now for your convenience, I have a larger version of these three cards. in the upper corner as well. They're a flame in red for antipyretic. In light blue, it's a Mr. T for analgesic. I honestly confuse Mr. T with T pain, but Mr. T himself also brings the pain so it works as well. And in purple, lastly the hot air balloon, we have anti-inflammatory. When we talk about NSAIDs, pay more attention to the class of NSAIDs they fit into, as well as the differences between NSAIDs, which is for the most part all that I will highlight. The majority of these will not appear in standardized tests, However, some of them with more important differences do commonly appear, so having a general idea of them is ideal. Additionally, the majority of these appear in everyday situations, and they were certainly tested heavily in my personal phase test. Before we get started on the illegal poker game itself, there's even more illegal activity going on in the game night. It's an old-fashioned cockfight. You need to be aware that the NSAIDs only work on one piece of the arachidonic acid pathway by blocking cyclooxygenase 1 and or 2. They prevent arachidonic acid from being turned into prostaglandins, prostacyclin, and thromboxins. Glucocorticoids in their hand inhibit both COX and PLA2, or phospholipase A, which initially converted the membrane phospholipid into arachidonic acid. If this confused you, pause the video and Google arachidonic acid images. Hopefully that should look familiar, and we can continue. So here, I'll use a spider web for arachidonic acid. And these two roosters prep to duke it out as COX-1 on the right in the blue and COX-2 on the left in the pink. Since COX-2 is inducible, we'll add this cage of additional baby roosters behind COX-2. If they simply increase expression of these roosters, they can produce more COX-2. This is not, however, the case for COX-1. Now, this is extremely important for our first poker player's effects. Aspirin, seen here showing a little bit of butt, is a COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitor. It is special here because it permanently alters the COX-1 and COX-2, thereby permanently inactivating it by acetylation of serine residues. You may then wonder why COX-2 can't simply make up for the lack of COX-1. Well, the location and expression levels of COX-1 and COX-2 vary throughout the body. This leads to aspirin's most important clinical use we see today, knocking out platelets to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Since platelets use COX-1, aspirin is able to take these out. Platelets, being small pieces of megakaryocytes, have no nucleus, Therefore, they permanently lose their cox until they are filtered out and replaced. Here we see a permanent rope connected to the cox one. With broken plates under it. Aspirin has some common side effects to be aware of, mainly tinnitus. Since here the music notes are around his ears, that will help you think of tinnitus. And it can also lead to an uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation, hence the free peas on the ground. Additional side effects characteristics of most NSAIDs are GI discomfort and ulceration, as well as decreased renal function in those with underlying renal disease. One funny thing about aspirin is that some health nuts believe in uncoated aspirin, which can actually stick to one specific place in the intestines or stomach and strongly reduce mucosal secretions, causing a very specific and localized ulcer in that location after a small dose. Most ulceration is more of a chronic use problem. Here, since we really want more to compare and contrast differing NSAIDs, pay attention to those that have strong GI issues or limited GI discomfort. GI discomfort and ulceration will be shown by either having a small or tall stack of this light colored chip. Next we see this man with a cone on his head and two flutes on his shirt. I've also added two flutes to his hand because he is difluzinol and we really wanted to drive this point home. His cone head suggests poor CNS penetration and his purple shirt tells us that he is a great anti-inflammatory, but the ripped red card at his feet says he has little antipyretic effects. After all, it has poor CNS penetration. Basically, cone head should tell you these two things on its own. 
doesn't get into the head, no antipyretic. So its dose is higher in the body and works better as an anti-inflammatory. This brings us to two of the wackier characters of Game Night. Mesalamine, seen here as a messy-faced man sitting on a rather uncomfortable chair. The arrow points the way mesalamine is usually given, a suppository. Osalazine, on the other hand, seen here as his two-headed friend, is also messy-faced. He sits on a Z to remind us osalazine is simply two mesalamines linked by an azo linkage. Now let's check out the ibuprofen umbrella. You'll notice it's good for all three, antipyretic, analgesic, and anti-inflammatory. At the base, we see two common household forms of this. Unless you cheapened out about the name brand ibuprofen, <clears throat> mom. For real though, ibuprofen off-brand is the same thing pharmacologically as Motrin, hence the Mot, and Advil, hence the Anvil. The tiny green chip tells us the limited GI effects. When you get a good drug worth billions of dollars, everyone wants a piece of the pie. So we, of course, have plenty of very similar drugs under the ibuprofen umbrella. The most important is this sleepy man here. He's drinking too much ale and he's taking a nap. That's because he is naproxen. It's better known as a leave, hence the ale in his hand. It too has limited GI effects, considering that it's somewhere around 20 times as potent as aspirin. So this brings us to an important discussion. Why don't cardiac patients take naproxen? Well, aspirin for special is a permanent inhibitor of the acetylation of COX-1. These other drugs, diflusanol, mesalamine, osalazine, and the ibuprofen umbrella drugs all bind to but do not permanently alter COX-1 chemically. That means they're simply temporary inhibitors, and the dose will wear off over time. A prime example of the importance of this is oxyprosin, which is a watch here, representing its extremely long half-life of around two days, which means those commercials that say, I usually leave twice a day, and that's way better than taking Advil four times a day, are arguing over a category which oxyprosin clearly wins. I take oxaprosin every other day, is what the commercial should say. Oxaprosin's funny side effect is that it's uricosuric, hence the yellow color and the urine stain around it. It's important to point out, in the future, anytime you see a watch in this drawing, it will mean that drug has a long half-life. The orange color, however, will not always mean it's uricosuric. This key here, popping a football, is ketoprofen, which in addition to its effects antagonizes bradykinins, hence the football, and stabilizes lysosomal membranes, hence the football lysing. It's not a perfect analogy, but it should be strong enough on test day for you to remember this drug. Lastly, we skipped on this creepy little pet Furby here. He stands for phenoprofen and flurbiprofen. Those are just two additional ibuprofen umbrella drugs to be aware of. It may seem like for a game night, very few players are actually playing much poker. So let's add some in. First, we have our serious pro player here, Salindak. Now, Salindak is wearing his sunglasses to tell us that he's here to win, and also that he's a pro drug. Now, next to him, this goofy looking fellow is a Totalac. Both of these are pretty good at the GI system, which, by the way, has problems with prostaglandin synthesis being inhibited and mucosal secretions diminishing, which can lead to ulceration. This is typically a chronic issue, so in general, minimal GI effects means the drug can be used in either a stronger dose or for a longer period of time to treat chronic conditions like arthritis or tendinitis. That brings us to the pregnant woman playing poker. She's clearly one of the most intense players at the table. You may not be able to tell, but she was going into labor. To combat this, she took a dose of herself, indomethacin. Now, I apologize in advance for any stereotypes I use, and I'm aware that she is Native American, not an Indian, yet this builds the strongest memory connection to this case, and thus I decided to keep it. Indomethacin can suppress labor-induced uterine contractions, as well as closed ductus arteriosus. Hence the duck on the baby car seat sitting next to her. Indomethacin is extremely potent and thus has a high degree of side effects with chronic use. So our pregnant player wearing her Indian headdress is all in on this hand. She can only take the drug for a short period of time before she risks serious complication. Let's add the third child to this picture. He is represented as a child in a toll booth because the only important difference we wanted to know about Tolmetin, which he stands for, was that it has well-studied pediatric population treatment. This brings us around to some of our COX-2 specialty drugs. The first two were early COX-2 specific drugs, and thus simply have a higher specificity to COX-2 than COX-1. They have a chain-link connection to the COX-2 rooster to denote that this is simply 
an increased specificity, and not a complete COX-2 selectivity. They are Nabumatone, represented here as a boo, the monkey from Aladdin. Now he is wearing sunglasses once again because he too is, that's right, a pro drug. Now next to him is Meloxicam, once again strongly stereotyped to look like a classic Mexican cucaracha band player. You'll notice that he's holding a camera in his hand because he is Meloxicam. Now both of these two are great at antipyretic, analgesic, and anti-inflammatory abilities. Next to them, our third player is Paroxicam, who's once again holding a camera in his hand and is capable of all three. You also notice the watch on his wrist, telling us that Paroxicam has a very long half-life. This brings us to our Pokemon, Toro over here, in blue. Now Toro, where a key is around his neck, stands for Ketorlac. Toro is an analgesic, hence his blue color. However, he is a weak anti-inflammatory, hence him stomping on this purple card. You'll notice the large scar running on the side of his blue bull. That's because Ketorlac is used to treat post-op pain as an alternative to opiates. There's also an injection into Ketorlac's back because Ketorlac is given as an IM injection. One drug not represented here will be Diclofenac. Diclofenac is a very potent COX inhibitor. We only have two drugs left, the next one being our COX-2 specific drug, Celecoxib. Celecoxib is a great anti-inflammatory drug with very few GI effects. That's because there's no inhibition of COX-1 in the GI tract. While this permanent line connected to the COX-2 cage to show you that it is COX-2 specific. One thing that was unexpected by pharmacologists was COX-2's expression level in the kidney. As a result of this is an increase in kidney specific prostaglandins. To show this, to show this, Celecoxib has wet himself. An important thing to know about Celecoxib is that it has no antiplatelet effect. So using it to treat cardiovascular disease would be an inefficient use of the drug. Our last drug is acetaminophen. Now acetaminophen is this angry looking player seen up here at the top of the screen. Acetaminophen, the big ace on his shirt, his name is Ace. Acetaminophen, his name is Ace, hence the big ace on his shirt. You'll notice he's wearing an antiparetic red shirt and an analgesic blue shirt. However, he's stumping on this purple anti-inflammatory balloon. That's a very important and high yield topic to know is that acetaminophen does not function as an anti-inflammatory drug. You'll notice this woman holding acetaminophen back. This is acetaminophen's sister, his sister, and acetylcysteine. Since acetaminophen is a common drug of choice for suicide, and acetylcysteine is given in the ER to combat this. Lastly, acetaminophen has two thought bubbles above him. The first one on the right shows how acetaminophen can be deactivated with GSH. The second on the left shows what happens when you lack GSH. Acetaminophen can react with protein sulfhydryl groups, leading to toxic effects, specifically on the liver. The reason acetaminophen is oftentimes used as a suicide drug is due to the narrow therapeutic window. It is also a common drug of choice in children who have a decreased amount of glutathione or GSH, thus making them more susceptible to the toxic effects. And that will end our discussion of game night at NSAIDs. I'm Sebastian with Docker Images MD. Have a productive night.